Moving on to our task number three with the dense mode within the multicast VRF. Next, we need to configure multicast routing on our CE routers, our 6 r 7 and Switch 1 using the sparse dense mode. Then we're going to join R7 and Switch 1 fast 00 to the multicast group of 239666. And then we're going to perform the ping from R6 to that particular multicast group. And we're going to look at the packet capture. So this would be data. So here we have the Switch 1. So we're going to join that and R7 to a group of 239666. And then R6 being a source, we'll, we'll send a ping and hopefully we'll get a reply back from both Switch 1 and R7. And all these are going to be operating across the default MDT. Okay, let me restart Wireshark. Clear the filter, let that run. First, let's work on router R6. And that would be IP multicast to enable multicast routing. And then enable PIM sparse dense on fast 00. Okay, the adjacency should come up right there. Show IP PIM neighbor, and it should have the adjacency with the. That looks like it's not there yet. Let me make sure that I can ping the R1 router interface, which is 16. Dot, sorry, dot 1. Okay, maybe we did, we did not have enabled properly on R1, so let's take a look. Show run interface fast01.16. See this enable right there. Oh, there you go. It just took a couple seconds for it to come up right here. Okay, PIM neighbor. There you go. Next, moving on to R7. IP multicast routing. Sparse den, and then we're going to join this particular interface to a group using IP IG, IP join 239666. Okay, and then switch one IP multicast routing. For switch one, here we have our VLAN 104, so we're going to have to enable that on our SVI 104. So interface VLAN 104, IP PIM. Sparse dense and then IP IGMP join 239666. Right, let's give make sure we give it enough time for the PIM adjacency to come up. Let's go back to R7 and do a quick check. Show IP PIM neighbor. Okay, so R7 is the neighbor of R2. And for switch one, show IP PIM neighbor, and we should have R4 being a neighbor of switch one. Okay. So at this point, we have enable multicast routing on all of our MPLS VPN sites for the VRFC one. So let's do our test ping from R6. Ping, we have ping 239666, so acting as a source of that particular multicast group. Doesn't look like we're getting our reply back, so let's see why. Make sure we still have our MDT. Looks good. Six has the neighbor, sparse mode. Okay, let's double check the PIM. I think we did already. So show IP PIM neighbor on R6. Okay, that seems to look good. So let's take a look at see if the something wrong with R1 or not. So do a show right interface fast 01.16, which is facing R6. See, it looks like we mistype it by using the IP uh, sp PIM sparse mode instead of sparse den. So that's probably why the uh, ping didn't work because since we don't have the rendezvous point, it's trying to use the uh, dense mode. And obviously the interface on R1 did not, or it was not configured to support the dense mode. So let's fix that using the sparse dense. Make sure that took effect. Okay, now let's go ahead and try again. From R6, let's do a ping to 239666. You see that we have a reply from switch1.10, and we try the second time, we also see a reply from R7. Okay, now if you go to the router R1 and do a show IP mroute VRFC1, 
we should be seeing right here the entry for 239666. For the source, which is R6, 16.6. .6. Incoming interface is FAST01.16. And you can see the outgoing interface is pointing out the tunnel 0 or our multicast tunnel interface. Now, if you do the show IPM route, you can see that all we have still are the default MDT. So the data traffic went over the default MDT. So we did not have the data MDT created since we did not exceed the threshold. And now if we look at from the R2 perspective, the show IP M route VRF C1, that R2 has R7 as a listener. So right here is the source coming from R6. The incoming interface is tunnel zero. So tunnel zero is a virtual tunnel of the MTI tunnel. And the outgoing interface is the interface that's facing R7. Take a look at the packet capture. So let me stop that. This time I'm going to filter it based on the IP protocol number one, which is our ICMP. Apply that, you will see we did two ping attempts. The first one, only the switch one reply, and the second time, both switch one and R7 reply. So let's take a look at our ping request. You can see the original multicast ping does not have MPLS label. So multicast traffic is always IP packets. The first IP header has the source of R1 loopback zero, and then the destination, which is our default MDT 239.00.100. So that's the pretty much like a transport address across the MPLS, the multicast, followed by a GRE header that encapsulate the original IP header with the destination of 239666. Okay, uh, ICMP reply on the other hand is just the unicast packet. So that's why we are seeing MPS label. So that went from switch one back to R6 and R7 back to R6. So they both are a regular MPLS unicast packet. Okay, so that's pretty much verified that our site to site multicast across MPLS VPNs are working. And so far we just using the dense mode and that should complete our task number three. Next is a final task, task number four with the sparse modes for multicast VRF. Now we need to reconfigure R7 as a rendezvous point sourcing from its loopback 10. And now we're going to join R6 fast 00 to the multicast group, a new group of 239777. I guess there's too many sevens in there. And then we need to perform a ping test from switch one to that same multicast group. And then we'll take another packet capture and review it. So let me restart. Uh, Packet capture, continue. Just going to put a display filter on on ICMP and now on R7. Configure R7 as a rendezvous point sourcing from its loopback 10. So loopback 10 with IP PIM sparse dense. Next we'll configure IP PIM uh, sent RP announce sourcing from loopback 10. And then scope, I'm just going to put 16. And then we do the RP discovery. Again, loop back 10, scope of 16. Okay, give it a second. But at this point, R7 should be announcing itself to the rest of the VPN sites, claiming itself as a rendezvous point. And since the, all of the PE routers are actually participating in the multicast routing for that VRF as well, so all of the PE routers should be receiving that information as well. So for example, if you go to R2 and do show, let's see, IP PIM VRFC1, let's look at the RP mapping for that. You see that there's a R7 in there as a rendezvous point. And now if we go over to R6, so that information should have been communicated across the MPLS VPN already. Do a show. IP PIM RP map. So same thing, R6 is receiving R7. Lead back 10 as a rendezvous point. So now we're going to join R6 to the group. So it's IP MP, IGMP join 239777. And then from switch one, just to double check, show IP PIM RP map. Okay, switch one received that announcement as well. And now if you're trying to ping, to 39777, you see that switch one is receiving a reply from R6. Now on R1, we do show IP route 
VRF C1. You see the R1 is seeing switch one as a source for that particular multicast group and the incoming interface is our tunnel zero and outgoing towards R6. Okay, same thing with the show IP M route, although this is already the second multicast groups for this particular client, it's still leveraging the default MDT to carry the data traffic. Okay, and we can definitely verify that by looking at the ICMP echo request. You see right here the destination for the packet within MPLS network is 2390100, which is our default MDT multicast address. Okay, same thing with, with the GRE encapsulation and then the insights of the original ICMP request destined to 239777. And the reply is again a MPLS unicast packet. This time has a double label. Nevertheless, it's still an MPLS packet. Oh, and also just to make a quick note, I did not point that out for that particular group. It has right here, rendezvous point pointing to 7701. Same thing if we jump over to R4 and do a show IP M route VRF C1. R4 is where that switch one, the source, is connected to. So for that particular group, the source is switch one, incoming interface is the local LAN, and then the outgoing is the multicast tunnel interface, and the rendezvous point is router R7. Okay, so even with the sparse mode, everything seems to still work the same way. And since all of the PE routers are participating in the local multicast for the VRF, we can pretty much treat it as any other multicast routers. And that's regardless of which multicast mode you run for the client, whether it's dense mode and sparse mode, which both of the modes we did in this lab, or even the source specific multicast should work the exact same way. And that would complete our task number four. Well, there was another intense lab for this video series, as there's quite a bit involved with the MPLS multicast VPN. But please don't be intimidated by the technologies or its complexities. All you need to do just to complete one layer at the time and verify your work along the way with all the show commands and make sure everything looks correct before you move on. So first you would get the global multicast routing working and then make sure that your default MDT is built and up and running. And then you can worry about the multicast for the VRF and the local sites itself, just like how we did it in this lab. And another thing to keep in mind, as we saw in this lab, that the, all the multicast packets that go across the MPLS network is actually IP packets, as the MPLS does not inherently support multicast. Let's remember the fact those multicast packets actually leverage the GRE encapsulations instead of MPLS. All right, so that wraps up our video on MPLS multicast VPN. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labminutes.com, and I'll see you guys in the next video.